to the train studio. Today on the train studio, what we're doing is we're continuing our work on our basing series. Uh, for this base here, if you recall, we worked on uh, adding in the earth paste. This one here, we went with a more sandy texture, so it's got a lot of uh, uh, variation both in the grit as well as these large um, stones that we went and added, relatively large, I guess, scale speaking. We also put the depression in here, if you recall, and that's going to be later added, uh, later for our uh, vegetation to be added. So we have those to, uh, to consider uh, in the next few steps. What we're going to do right now is we're actually going to use this uh, AK Interactive product here, um, and it's called Kursk Earth. So it's a real sort of uh, dry, um, like a light, a really light green, more olive tone, um, kind of like a tundra based um, product. Uh, we're going to apply that on here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some suitable vegetation, so some light uh, light greens, yellow type grasses, just to kind of give you uh, yet a, yet another variation uh, of uh, basing uh, basing looks that you can that you can do. Uh, be sure to uh, look at the other videos as well if you want to see kind of how to do a, a more of a generic sort of soil based as well as the damp. Um, damp sort of forest earth based. So uh, I'm going to be doing all three of those basically simultaneously here. So, um, so for this step, it's it's quite easy. Uh, we're just going to uh, this is an enamel based product. Uh, just in case you're curious, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just just start applying the enamel right over um, the existing dry uh, base that we have. The base itself is uh, fully solidified and is now um, quite flexible. We want to be sure to try our very best not to paint on the uh, the large stones that are on there. Um, we don't want our basing uh, color to be on there. Although if we get a little bit, that's fine. Uh, we're probably going to have um, some vegetation and some grass material kind of right up against the rock anyway, just to help smooth the transition. So, um, but best you can try to try to avoid uh, avoid that. I'm painting the enamel right down over the edge. Um, just gives me a, a consistent surface uh, later on. If I go ahead and change the color, um, the undertones will all be the same. So, Again, just, just applying this, other than the rocks, it's relatively simple in terms of what I can, uh, what I can and can't paint. The enamel runs, so if you need to kind of just come close to the uh, come close to the rock, um, just sort of press your brush down, and it will uh, it will flood in uh, to that surface quite easily. There we go. Almost done. There. That looks relatively uh, nice. So as you can see, the, the base surface has really uh, been, been transformed. We have this real yellow uh, tundra type color. Um, like I said, it's, it's more of a, I find it's like a kind of like a muted olive color, um, uh, light mustard, however you want to describe it. It's a very dry um, earth based. So this could be uh, very applicable for like a dry planet or, or something uh, similar to that. Once we start adding in the vegetation again, more of those yellows and light greens, um, I think it'll really start to uh, accent the, the ground look. We're not going to be done with this. We're not going to leave it just as a single color. We will want to go in and add some, some highlight and some variation uh, to the texture. Um, but this is definitely a, a nice base color, something that we can work up from. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set this aside, and then we're going to come back and visit it with the uh, with the next steps. Okay, so uh, for this uh, step, what we're doing is uh, working on our uh, more arid tundra base. Um, we had previously applied the uh, the color. Um, I believe we used a cursed earth. Um, the enamel, it uh, went over the entire surface and now it is uh, nicely dry for us. So we can go ahead and do the, uh, do the next step. Uh, for this one, we're gonna be doing a dry brush, really quick dry brush. I'm just gonna grab a base as a palette. And for this, we're gonna be using Army, Army Painter's uh, Skeleton Bone. Um, so it's a very, very light um, uh, base color, uh, considerably lighter than we used there, but we wanna go ahead and put a nice, uh, nice dry brush highlight on this. So just put a little bit out on the on the base. 
get our brush with some paint in the end, brush a bunch of it off on the paper towel. And then we're just gonna go in and start doing a dry brush. Now we're gonna wanna be careful um, in and around the rocks, of course. We wanted to uh, try to avoid uh, getting any color on them, but if we do, it's not the end of the world. It's really going to uh, dry the base out. It's going to look considerably um, drier than it did before. Again, really hitting those, those high points right around where the grasses are going to be. Thinking about getting that, um, you know, a look for your for your army, uh, or even a even a piece of terrain that was, you know, quite arid, quite uh, desolate in in terms of uh, very little moisture. Um, this is going to be kind of the the base that may be in line with that uh, idea. So there you have it. Um, it's really uh, highlighting the stones now. Um, I didn't go down and highlight in our recess there because we're going to put some vegetation in later. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, it's got considerable um, dryness uh, in terms of the look. So uh, that ends that stage and we'll uh, go on to the next step. Okay, guys, so let's come back to the last and final stage of uh, this uh, sort of tundra light desert uh, build. Uh, so just to recap, you know, we've had uh, the earth paste applied with the with the grit, the medium and fine grit applied. Uh, we put two stones in there. We left a small depression as well. Uh, we wanted to sink some vegetation in there. Uh, we gave it an overall dry brush using uh, Army Painter's uh, skeleton bone. And now we've kind of got to this real arid look. Um, you could leave it just here if you wanted. Um, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. It's definitely a sort of a, a, a desert or uh, you know, a desolate type planet look. Um, but let's go ahead and sort of spice it up with um, just some simple application of some uh, some tufts and some plants. So what I'm going to use for this is uh, I'm going to use the same stuff I always use. Uh, it's uh, Gamer's Grass uh, Tufts. This is a real light yellow color here. You'll notice that there's uh, quite a few on here. Um, this is a fairly large format. They typically uh, don't sell them in this size, but you could certainly get uh, smaller formats and I highly recommend uh, picking up a couple colors. Using just one color uh, kind of leaves a little bit to, to be desired in terms of the variation that you can get. Um, it, it certainly doesn't look bad, but a couple colors uh, does make it look a lot nicer. Um, as well, I'm going to use some of this here as well. It's got some really uh, dark green, light green, and then a little bit of the olive uh, tone. It's, this is a little more yellow, and so you can kind of see that these sort of blend nicely together, and I think they'll work really well with our arid base. So let's go ahead and uh, stick some on there. Uh, for this, it's a pretty straightforward application. Uh, just going to use some white PVA. It's uh, This is Weld Bond if you want to know the particular brand. And uh, I like using this stuff because it dries clear and it's very tacky uh, right off the hop. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my, um, my base my uh, grass material and you can use tweezers for this and if you don't have tweezers you can just use your fingers that's pretty fine uh, you just put a little bit on the back of the uh, the tuft itself and then you're going to locate on the um, piece where exactly you want that to go so i want mine to go right there uh, you notice i got a little bit extra pva that's perfectly fine it's going to dry clear and i want to go ahead and sort of just press that in place and then just give your finger a little tap on it just to kind of fluff it up. So here we go. So I just want mine to stick right there. Um, let's go ahead and take a larger tuff and then go on the other side of the rock. Again, just spreading it out um, with your, uh, your toothpick applicator at this point. And just orient it. Um, so if you have any flat spots, uh, you know, they're kind of flat against the rock. Uh, this one here is going to be uh, very kind of bushy, bushy-like tough. I'm just going to squeeze that around. I'm just going to use the toothpick again just to sort of flex that, that grass. Try to make sure or ensure that you have as much contact as possible. 
Um, that's just going to allow for better adherence. So as you can see, we got a couple nice tufts on there starting to you know, look a little bit more lively. Not that we were going for a real lively look, but uh, we were going for something uh, that had a little bit of contrast. Uh, next, I'm going to take um, one of the green or more green and yellow or uh, more green and olive type uh, tufts. Again, just spreading that glue out on the back. And now I'm going to go into those depressions that we left earlier. Okay, so I'm going to push one just over here. This is a quite a tall tuft, so I'm going to actually just squeeze it down in there. And this is going to allow me to, instead of having the um, wide spread, I'm going to have quite a nice vertical pitch out of that grass because I just sort of squeezed it uh, directly down and it's giving me a really nice um, uh, pop here uh, coming vertically. And you'll see why in a second or why I chose to do that. Uh, again, just taking another um, bit of the glue. I'll just show you kind of under the camera here. Just spreading the glue out. I know it's not quite in focus. There we go. Just putting a little bit of glue on there. And then going ahead and squishing that into the other side of the depression. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to wrap this one right around the rock that we had in there before. Again, taking advantage of that vertical height and then I'm just going to flex it down uh, over the rock here. So again, just giving that a uh, little bit of extra detail. All right, so that's nicely pressed in there as well. Okay, and finally what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to drop in this little uh, succulent here. Um, so I'm just going to pop that underneath there. So this is definitely going to fit with our uh, desert or a dry base motif. You can see here, um, I can go ahead and dry brush this after. I'm just going to leave it as is right out of the, uh, the package. Um, so this little plant here has uh, just kind of a flat, let me just see if it'll stay still for me, just a little bit of a flat surface uh, here that I'm going to glue in. Now, you could do this with hot glue if you wanted, that low temp hot glue. Uh, I'm actually just going to put a nice globule of, uh, of the weld bond right on. There we go. And then I'm going to go and find a nice location that I can squeeze this down in between, in between those um, plants that I already had or that grass that I already had on there. Now hot glue is certainly going to hold this uh, quicker but uh, the, uh, the weld bond will uh, sufficiently hold this after some time. So you're just going to have to kind of press that uh, into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm going to go um, hold this off camera. I'm going to uh, tidy up the base a little bit with some, uh, some paint. And then I'm going to come back and kind of show you guys what this looks like uh, in the finished uh, result. So stay tuned. Okay, folks, and so here we have the uh, the finished results. Uh, hopefully that's showing up on camera all right for you guys. Uh, what we have here is uh, just just as we, we've uh, shown you the application of, we have the, uh, the, the gamer's grass tufts, you know, the yellow, the olive green. Um, we have this succulent plant here that's been inserted. Um, the uh, the bore or the uh, the base edge has been given a, a nice little coat uh, of paint. Um, I believe I used a Vallejo uh, model air uh, the dirt color. It's literally called dirt, um, and I think that gives it a nice little uh, sort of neutral tone uh, on the side here. So if I just sort of lift that up again, you can kind of just see I just painted right over the edge. Doesn't have to be anything special. This is just the the base edge. The MDF doesn't paint near as clean as. Uh, as the plastic, but as you can see, it kind of gives it a nice, a nice finished look there. Um, in the overhead cam, you can kind of just see the, the layout and design. Now, you may be thinking that this plant might be too large for, for a legion fig or, or something like that or, or similar, but I, I would argue that it, in fact, it's not. Um, the, uh, the models are gonna look pretty cool when you have some sort of waist high or you know, mid thigh high uh, plants. Uh, especially if you were using this uh, sort of plant theme throughout your your um, 
you're out uh, throughout your army. Um, you could certainly have some of these succulents maybe in and around your ATRT walkers or something similar like that. Uh, likewise, if you're playing like 40k or something like that, um, you know, this may be a little, uh, it would be taller certainly on figs, um, but some of your walkers or vehicles and things like that, it would actually give some, some nice uh, resemblance of height um, that you may otherwise not achieve if you're just kind of doing um, simplistic uh, base design. So not to say this is complex or anything like that. I, in fact, I would argue that it's quite simple. Um, very few products make it uh, pop and look quite nice. So that's going to conclude uh, this sort of tundra slash desert uh, base. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in whatever method uh, you can as you view this, whether it's YouTube or, or similar. Um, I'm always open to suggestions and trying to improve these how-tos. So um, like I said, guys, really appreciate your, uh, your interest in this. And uh, stay tuned for more from the Terrain Studio. Thanks for watching.